Today, there are two million descendants of French Canadian immigrants living in New England. These are our stories. Welcome to the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. Venez tous jeunes filles et garçons, je vais vous raconter l'histoire de notre immigration ici au USA. De grands aventuriers de pays étrangers. This is the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. I am Jesse Martineau. Now, a bit ago, I came across an organization called the New Foundation, the New Orleans Institute that promotes French and Creole culture. And I am very excited to learn more about this organization. And and I am joined by the gentleman behind the organization, Scott Tilton, Rudy Vezinay. Welcome to the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. Hi, thanks so much. We're glad to be here. Thank you. All right, so before we talk about the organization, I'd kind of like to get your stories. So I um, guess, Scott, let's start with you. So where did you grow up? Sure. Um, so, yeah, my name is Scott Tilton. I grew up in New Orleans. So I kind of, all of my family based down there, uh, kind of grew up during my formative years there. And so I grew up a little bit in a, in a family definitely influenced uh, kind of by the French language. It was kind of a little bit of a smattering of the language and but I had the opportunity to learn French from my father and then kind of for other people in my life I had the opportunity to learn to learn St. Lucian Creole and then from there kind of become interested in learning Louisiana Creole so I think uh quite a little bit of a polyglot background a lot of different no, that's awesome a lot of influences in my life and so that kind of carried me to have the opportunity to first study in the in Virginia and then that brought me to Paris uh so I've been living here for the last couple of years, and so we're moving back to New Orleans right now to start new, and uh, so we're excited to talk a little bit more about our project. No, that's cool. So did, now, did your dad speak French? Did yeah, you well, you, you, go ahead. Yeah, so he has some background. Um, so his family is historically has a lot of French. Uh, we, his, his, so my grammaire's generation in English. We also speak French. <laughs> I like that grammar, cool. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we grew up, um, so her generation, uh, several of her siblings spoke French beautifully and um, kind of, I think it's coming out of that tradition, Louisiana being Francophone. And so he, from I think a couple different contexts had the opportunity to start picking up French and then he continued with it in in his studies and then actually spent a little bit of time in France as well for, uh, for doing medicine. So he um, was always kind of the great influence in my life on that. I think I always had this kind of culture around me that promoted the use of the French language in New Orleans. And I think uh, some different members of my family who are always active and trying to rejuvenate and and kind of promote the French language. And I think it was kind of, um, what was kind of interesting is I kind of, my formative years were in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. And I've always called those the kind of vertigo years in New Orleans. It was a sort of piecing everything back together. it was fascinating because I was at a time where I think my father and I, we, we would talk a lot and that's really where he started helping me learn more of the, of the language and that was reinforced kind of through my own studies and everything like that. So it was kind of a looking back at that period of fascinating time to be kind of reconnecting with the culture of New Orleans and kind of rethinking about what it means to be French speaking in New Orleans and having very fortunately those influences on my life who kind of wanted to spur that. Sure. Interest. No, that's awesome. So Rudy, what's your story? So I'm not from Louisiana. I'm from <laughs> <laughs> the other side of the pond. So I was born and raised in Clermont-Ferrand, which is in Auvergne. So a lot of people don't know where Clermont-Ferrand is. So it's right in the middle of France. Um, I would say that my background is pretty international. Uh, I worked at the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs for over seven years uh, on cultural outreach, international cooperation, so trying to bring countries closer in terms of culture, education, research, all of that. Um, And I worked a lot on the United States. I I spent one year in Los Angeles um, and I was working at the French consulate there, uh, cultural outreach as well. So that's kind of how I got interested in the Francophonie. And I remember meeting Scott four years ago and he told me that he had uh, this great project to have Louisiana join uh, the Francophonie, the international organization of the Francophonie. So I thought it was really interesting in terms of cooperation, and I decided to to join this initiative. Oh, very awesome. I got to tell you, the only reason I know that town at all is because I'm a giant rugby fan. So very cool. <laughs> but, <laughs> but perfect. But yeah, so you guys, obviously, one's from France, one's from New Orleans. How did you run into each other, and how did this lead to, I don't know, let's get Louisiana and the Francophonie? We start, we just happened to meet in Paris. And then what happened is kind of the way that it developed was at the time I was doing my master's degree here and I had the opportunity um, to go to a forum on the economics of the Francophonie. So it was like the big economic forum that happens, I think, every two or three years. 
And so it was while I was there that I, I be kind of became curious in the idea. I was actually taking the model of Quebec, interestingly. And it, of course, Canada is a member and it's playing right. Quebec was instrumental in the founding. Sure. Of the so it's no surprise, right. that, you know, they're <laughs> instrumental in it. But what was interesting is that the status of Quebec and the status of Canada, they're both members. So it made me think that maybe in the federalist structure of the United States, there may be an opportunity for Louisiana to join the organization. And so it kind of started this kind of conversation and having met Rudy and kind of his experience was just international affairs and diplomacy. We just started talking about this and kind of thinking about the process if we wanted to go about it, how it would work and how we could develop it. So we worked on the course for about two years. Uh, it started by kind of contacting officials in Louisiana and then we had the opportunity to kind of liaise with the OIF directly and have meetings with the then secretary of the cabinet, of the cabinet for the secretary general. Sure and learn about the procedure. And so it began this process in which uh, kind of different steps, but having, uh, Louisiana, having Louisiana express its interest, going about it with the uh, US Senate to get the authorization so that Louisiana oh, could wow. join. And then uh, eventually going through the process of having Louisiana put together its formal application. And fortunately uh, in October of 2018, with the, I think you know, we, after I, we joked there was about a, a thousand emails in. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of people helping and it was a lot of kind of great things coming together and a lot of just open doors for Louisiana to join this organization. And fortunately in October of 2018, uh, during the summit uh, that the OIF has uh, in Yerevan, Armenia uh, that year, they unanimously accepted us to join the organization. So we joined, the, became the first U.S. state within the organization. That's awesome. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was a big deal to us up here in New England, for sure. So maybe, I guess, maybe we should backtrack a little bit. Can you just explain what the Francophonie is and why it was such a huge deal to basically anybody with a French last name that you guys got in? Because we thought it was amazing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, or we just call it the Francophonie, um, is uh, an international organization, as, it, as, it, uh, as its name indicates, uh, which brings together 88 countries and regions. So now Louisiana is a part of it as well. It was founded in 1970 um, by a bunch of countries, including France and also uh, Quebec as a province was there as well. Uh, countries that wanted to, to foster exchange and international cooperation. Um, so right now, the Francophonie is the second largest uh, international organization after the UN. So it's quite wow. big and there are 88 countries and regions uh, in it. So it's a great way to, to foster dialogue between countries and to set up projects, programs, and all that. Um, so in terms of governance, uh, the OIF or the Francophonie um, is really interested in education and striving to promote education uh, across the Francophone world. So by promoting ex exchange. And um, it's also um, working a lot to, to develop exchange between young people. So for instance, have young people, I don't know, from Senegal go to Quebec or vice versa, so, so they can exchange and talk and develop new projects and understand also um, how their cultures can, may be different or similar. Um, and the Francophonie is also oriented towards multilingualism. So it means that it's, it's striving to promote um, different languages in the same place. So for instance, a lot of Francophone countries also have another language. Sure. So for instance, it's the case for Louisiana where English is still, let's say the main language, but French is still around as well. So it's the Francophonie uh, gives indications, let's say on how to, to promote French uh, or other languages when they're minority languages, for instance. No, that's awesome. All right, so how do we go then from this tremendous accomplishment to sitting around being like, you know what, I don't think that's good enough. Let's start a crazy, awesome organization. So how did that process go? Yeah, so we were actually literally sitting by the sand here in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> we say, but, <laughs> but it was fun. And we were talking about that entire process. And a lot of people had emailed us, sent us like, we're really excited about this process to have Louisiana join the Francophonie and we could tell that it was really resonating with a lot of people. So we were wondering how can we take it to the next level and, and we thought it would be nice to have a place where we could bring people together, where people could talk, people could develop projects and programs. So that's how we came up with uh, the new foundation. Now, now how long before, you know, hanging out Grab some beverages by by the Sen uh, until you were actually able to just announce this initiative to the world. Like, how long did that development take place? 
mm-hmm. about a year. Um, two years. Yeah, two years yeah. in its entirety. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was kind of, um, yeah, we had a, we, you know, I think one of the important things in developing new is if, if we wanted to kind of develop out, like we had to maybe decide what structure we wanted, how, how we were going to organize it, what communities we wanted to serve, and also talk with people on the ground, whether sure. we talked to a lot of people in Louisiana, but also around the United States. And I think that's kind of key is that we're, we're thrilled that Louisiana is in the Francophonie. And I think symbolically and kind of what we want to work on in terms of t- cooperation, Louisiana is very important. But there is a Francophone reality in the United States. There are millions of people who speak French. There's this long, long history, as New England knows, about the kind of cultural, cross-cultural. Absolutely, history. yeah. To develop the Francophonie as a project within the United States would be very important. And I think our lens is definitely from wanting to develop that from Louisiana, because Louisiana, for all sorts of interesting historical reasons. and yeah, absolutely. The strong history of being both francophone and creolophone but at the same time as we were wanting to develop the project we realized that sometimes what's difficult on the ground are resources so if you want to be able to promote ed- language french in education you want to promote louisiana creole in education how do you provide get those resources but there's a lot of resources internationally there's a lot of organizations there's a lot of different people who want to be helping these languages so we were thinking as we developed out new over the course of those two years two years is like how do we lay the foundation for those partnerships today? How do we get the communities we want to have involved, get their input so that they shape what the project will look like? And then also just understand what are the main needs in terms of resources and other things we need on the ground today. Sure. Now, we've mentioned the Creole language a couple of times. I think maybe it would be helpful to backtrack because there might be listeners. We get listeners from all over the place, um, all over the country, internationally. It's really fun. But uh, there might be a couple who aren't really familiar. So what, first, what is Creole? Where, where does it come from? And how did it end up in New Orleans? Yeah, so I always say that in Louisiana in general, if you think about it historically, was sort of born in the Caribbean and raised in America. You know, there's this influence. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's this influ- strong influence, of course, from Quebec and the maritime provinces of Canada, and it's kind of the amalgamation of these influences that arrive in, in Louisiana and form the culture. But Creole culture specifically, I think that there are people who, you know, I, I think can give a succinct definition, but understanding it as kind of a cultural movement and, and kind of a conglomeration of groups in Louisiana takes a lot of, there are people from the African diaspora, from indigenous cultures, from France, from Spain, and a lot of the influence coming out of the Caribbean that shapes that culture and how it develops in Louisiana. So when we talk about the Louisiana Creole language, which there are a lot of different linguists who work on this and experts in the field, so they can kind of talk about the specific sure. brand and formulation, of, you know, how it all came together. But broadly speaking, it came together in the 18th century. It takes together a lot of French, West African uh, languages and, and other some indigenous languages in Louisiana and it emerged as a separate language in Louisiana and is often practiced kind of across communities, Francophone and Creolophone populations in Louisiana. We're not always as linguistically distinct. I think. Sure, no, absolutely. Between the languages and we actually recently um, had a great uh, conference that we held co-hosted with Cambridge University about revitalizing Louisiana Creole. So that's awesome. the language existed um, for hundred has existed and has thrived for hundreds of years. And in the past decades, because of kind of pressures to abandon Louisiana's heritage languages, the number of native speakers has declined. But there's been a very long, you know, I think a very succinct and a very uh, kind of adamant movement to develop uh, Louisiana Creole and make sure that kind of the transmission continues. So that's what we're referring to about Louisiana Creole. That's so awesome. New Orleans is such a unique place. I've only been once. I got to go back. I mean, it's got its own, own language, own food, own music. Just, just an awesome, awesome, awesome place to visit. So I always get a kick out of asking people where they get the names for stuff. So who came up with the name New Foundation? And why was that the right choice? <laughs> well, we came up with it while having pizza. Of, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> we were racking our brains for the longest time about how we wanted to develop it. It was a name. long process, but yeah. yeah. We came up with the idea, actually. Scott did. So, oh, it's kind of, yeah. no, no, it was, it was kind of an epiphany all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, but, we, but, we, but we built on it. I think the idea of uh, inclusion, we, what we really wanted to do was come up with a name that, it, that expressed um, like what we wanted to do, like it's kind of the ethos of our organization about bringing everyone in. So we think we were like, well, what are we going to call it? How are we going to do it? You know, we came up with a bunch of different names, but then we we're just like, well, let's go to the source a little bit. It's new. <laughs> it's us. You know what I mean? This is us in the broader sense. It's anyone who wants to join this movement, anyone who wants to be involved in the promotion of these languages. 
And also, even if it's not specifically just French or Louisiana Creole, just the idea of multilingualism as a concept that should be promoted in the United States and Absolutely. working on as a, as a society. So I think uh, it's also wonderful to play around with in the sense that we could play, say New Orleans. <laughs> 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 We've come up with a million in our post or a million different things because it's also the idea of new also expresses the idea of kind of N-E-W in English to kind of like innovation and kind of things that we want to be promoting as an organization. And new also stands for new as in N-E-W. So it was yeah. important for us to promote that idea that um, we wanted to have some kind of modern foundation to show that French is not something that no longer exists, but ra rather something that can bring new opportunities and which we can interpret in a new way together. Awesome. When you guys start selling the uh, NOUS Orleans t-shirts, I'll buy it. I'll be, I'll be one. <laughs> Perfect. I'll be one of the first. Talk about the organization itself. Um, your website mentions you guys like to promote, connect, and build. And I kind of like to take those one at a time if possible. So what are you promoting? Who are you promoting to? So we are promoting Louisiana Creole and French in Louisiana and in the United States. That's our first objective. So we want to raise awareness uh, on these languages and show that they can bring new opportunities in the sense that there are 87 uh, other members of the Francophonie uh, we could work with. So it's, it's actually a lot of countries. So a lot of opportunities like cultural, economic, institutional um, could uh, come up from this. So that's really something we want to do. And to promote French and Louisiana Creole, we want to, to create or uh, help other people create resources. So for instance, uh, in the fields of music, uh, the arts, literature. So we've been posting a lot of resources on our social media pages and website too. Um, and we publish both in French and in English as well. We want to use English as much as possible too. So we can reach out to a wider audience and also reach out to an audience um, to people who are not necessarily francophone right now and who may be interested in learning French. Sure. No, that's very cool. And the connect page, one thing that caught my attention is obviously the you want kind of like a cultural exchange, but you also want to connect with an economic exchange. So what what are the goals for that side? Because that to me that piece is incredibly important to the long term long term sustainability of anything. Oh, that's a great point. And I, I think um that, that's absolutely right. And I think when you also look at the Francophonie and just more broadly, uh, just uh, there's a lot of other places that speak these languages. It represents 16% of the global economy. Yeah. I think that's a big point in the sense that if you want to lay the foundation to kind of innovate in the economy, is that the beauty of the, I think multilingualism and, and starting to prepare those services needs to start today. And Louisiana has done a wonderful job in the past couple of decades about reinserting French and, and to a certain degree, Louisiana Creole are working on it to develop pedagogical resources and also create immersion schools. And so if we want yeah. to provide as students are coming up through these, the system, if we want to provide them with jobs, thinking constructively about what services do we need to be able to provide to attract Francophone businesses and also create businesses in, in, at home, we need to start working on that. So I think our connect is sitting there going, well, there's a lot of organizations in Francophone countries. Sure, there. yeah, absolutely, that yeah. For, that have expertise in this, and we've been working on that uh, pretty, you know, at it in our even in our couple months of operating new, we've been really working on that bent. So I think one of the way, ways that we've been working on that is we joined this group called the Réseau International des Maisons de Francophonie. So it's the uh, RIMF, and what it does is it brings together all the Francophone cultural institutes, a, a, a large number of them around, over 40 around the world. Nice. So we are one of the two organizations in the United States that are part of this network. So we're thinking as we develop programs and projects going out, being able to pair with some of these organizations in other countries in which Francophone businesses are well established and doing some knowledge sharing and maybe exchange of, of having business people from Louisiana go once COVID oblige, you know, once we can kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, have right. those types of constructive programs that we could design. And I think for Louisiana, there's a big, um, maybe imperative to a certain degree to start thinking about how we want to, you know, adapt for a next generation of our economy. And I think providing those opportunities because we want to make sure that multilingualism and having people speak multiple languages is a way to keep the talented youth at home because we can provide them maybe an opportunity that we, they would not necessarily be able to have elsewhere. That's awesome. Um, I tell you, even in New England, I get super frustrated sometimes because we have a 
ton of different organizations and we do a pretty poor job collaborating even amongst each other just in this region. So to know that you guys are reaching out internationally, I think is, is very, very awesome. Because like you said, there's a ton of resources out there. There's a lot of people who have a lot of the same challenges we do all over the place. So it is very cool to be able to work together. So, but the one I want to talk about next, because I thought it was really, really fun when I read about it on your page, the build, what are you building? <laughs> So we want to build a physical cultural institute in New Orleans. That's uh, awesome. Specifically dedicated to, to French and Creole. So we want a vibrant place that would include a cafe, what we call uh, the New Ideas Lab. So a place where we could host conferences, concerts, uh, anything really, workshops for people to exchange ideas, create new things in French and Creole. And uh, so we want this place to be as vibrant as possible. And we want people to feel... Um, safe there, uh, if I could put it this way. We want people to be able to use whatever, you know, kind of French there they want to speak or uh, Creole. We want them to be able to interact. And we also um, want it to be as modern as possible to show uh, that these languages are alive and can provide us with something new. Oh, that's very cool. So do you have a timeline on when you hope to get this built? Because this, this sounds amazing. I would definitely have to hang out for sure. <laughs> well, yeah, a good occasion to come to New Orleans. <laughs> there you go. I think we'll be raising funds in 2021. Um, and I think we fortunately just got our, uh, maybe a little bit of a technical thing, but a 501c3, so we're now attached. That's huge. Yeah. So, you're trying to get donators. Uh, you're trying to get donors. That's really, really important. Absolutely. That's why it took exciting. two years uh, to get the project off the ground. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But, uh, but we fortunately have that. So it, it, it's, one of, it's the last big piece of the puzzle we needed in there. So I think uh, now that we have that, it streamlines the process. Process and I think, uh, you know, the, the 2020 is not the easiest year. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll agree on that front. But I think uh, we there's a lot of enthusiasm. There's a lot of uh, things that are aligning for us to be able to raise funds in 2021 and hopefully open by late 2021, 2022. I think that would be fantastic. And I think um, to Rudy's point, which I thought was great, is having a physical space where people can come together is, is very important. There are some of these types of spaces in Louisiana, but when we were talking in the aftermath, like just thinking about the OIF initiative and having Louisiana be part of the Francophonie, that was one of the kind of common feedback that we got. Or, you know, it's just like, we need spaces where we can just go and just know that the language will be spoken there. You know, sure, like, no, absolutely. Having this kind of social, you know, kind of interaction and people running around each other, figuring out whether they speak. <laughs> Yeah. You know, then you go into the space and you know that like if you launch into the language, no one's going to side on you, you know? And I think yeah, no. And, and one thing that, I mean, I run against a lot here is uh, you can have a group where, you know, 100 people, 99 speak French, but the one who doesn't means that everybody else has to speak English. So I think it's very cool to have a place where even if you're not, you know, super confident in your French skills, you know, if you show up, you're going to be safe speaking French regardless of who's there. So that's going to be awesome. No, that's very, very cool. That's exciting. I like that a lot. That's a great point that you made. I, I think um, that, that kind of that dynamic about when do you switch into one, when do you switch into the other is always that kind of code switching that's, that's tough to navigate, especially when you're a minority language in this way. And I think creating the spaces in which you can practice it's great, but also inviting everyone in. You know, I, I think that there's no dynamic, yeah. so to speak. I think uh, we understand to a certain degree how some of these kind of like antagonism sometimes between French and English and the kind of navigating of that space, but there doesn't need to be that, you know, it doesn't have to be designed that way. And in a place like Louisiana, where the vast majority of the population sure. is English, we can kind of rest assured that we know that we speak English to a certain degree. So I think if we can create a space in which people know that they can also, you know, that they can add that French element or add Louisiana Creole into that mix and know that they can speak, it's great. And if someone doesn't speak those languages yet, but knows they can go to that space if they want to learn and be kind of welcomed into it, I think would be do a lot to help build that dialogue between these languages. No, that's, I mean, I think that's incredibly important. Uh, that's, I mean, that's huge because I've run across a lot of people up here who I know who are pretty passionate about, you know, their culture, their heritage. And I would ask, you know, why, well, why aren't you involved in, you know, a, whatever organization happens to be near them? And um, a lot of times they tell me, well, it's because I don't speak French. So for you guys to be very clear that even non-French speakers are invited to this party, I think is super, super important. I think that's really, really awesome. No, very cool. You guys mentioned your resources is one of the things that you hope to be able to offer. What are we talking about? What kind of resources? Where can people find these resources? So we would like to have resources online, so it could be a resource that anyone could access, so it could be information on music, literature, 
not only you know classics, if I could put it this way, we also want to show the creativity of other countries and regions. For instance, I don't know, many countries in Africa are not very well known, so and they, they are very creative, so we'd like to, to feature that. And uh, so this would be on our website. We have recorded conferences too and different kind uh, of resources. And in person, once we have the physical cultural center, we would like to, to have a wide array of um, workshops. So they could be uh, on different topics, for instance, uh, cultural, uh, people could exchange ideas, economic, people could uh, um, exchange ideas on how to, to do business with other French, uh, French speaking countries, for instance. They could be institutional on how to set up partnerships with another city, for instance, uh, out there. And we would also like to have conferences. So we think it's very important to have thought leaders come to Louisiana to explain what their ideas are. And also we want to have Louisianans go abroad or somewhere else in the US, New England, for instance, so they can also talk about their francophonie, what it's like to speak French in Louisiana. And um, so we, want, we really want to promote idea sharing. It's very important for us. And we could also host concerts, for instance, and um, you know, provide information on how to cook francophone recipes from all around the world. So it, it would be very broad. We, we want to um, kind of uh, engage people and we also want them to be able to think about what it is to be francophone today. And maybe to add on a little bit to that as well, I think that's a great point. And one of the elements that's really important in terms of resources is just in the large amount of domains possible, increasing access to the to the languages. So I think one of the things that we did very consciously was translate our website into Louisiana Creole. And we worked with a great uh, academic, Oliver Mayer at, at Cambridge to do that. And the idea is that, that if you can see the language and being used in that way, and also maybe have these resources where you can compare to whatever language you speak. So let's say you can compare between English and Creole, you're starting to kind of just see how the language is being used and in what context. And I think that's one element that's important. We've also included kind of language primers and helping people learn just kind of some of the basics about that. And also different podcasts like this one, and just being able to kind of see and, and interact with these resources. And I think the other element that we've been doing a lot is talking about the geography of the Francophonie. So we've done, we featured- Yeah, that's features. very cool. What we always do in those is beyond providing just kind of bilingual resources in these contexts for like French and English, so you learn more about these places, we talk about their connections to places like Louisiana, so that you're starting to kind of understand that these places don't exist as isolated geographies, that they're all right. linked to us. And I think that that's really important for understanding just even more broadly the Francophonie inside of the United States is that there's a lot of regions. <laughs> it's a big yeah, absolutely. A yeah, no doubt. French and we need to maybe be thinking about those geographies and how they're connected and interconnected in that way. Yeah, I mean that honestly that, that section of your webpage where you have all the different regions of the world and getting the information, the background and those, that's super interesting. I spent a lot of time there to be honest. I was getting ready for the interview. I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but one other thing that I thought was really cool, I knew I had to bring up, um, was you have a section called listen, which I thought was real. So what is that? Explain to us what, who put that together? Because again, I spent a little bit of time there when I was getting ready for this interview because it's way fun. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we had the idea. I, I think uh, in this case, I mean, growing up in New Orleans, like the city is a rhythm. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's as much a lifestyle it is as a place. And I think if you cannot parse out New Orleans from its music. So I think we were just thinking from that standpoint of it's like, you know, it, people can read, people can read about the Francophonie, they can learn about other places, so they can kind of travel via the Francophonie, but they can also listen via the Francophonie. Mm -hmm. So we put together, uh, for the moment, we'll keep working on them. It's kind of a one one playlist is like being, and this is Rudy's uh, brainchild was putting together, like if you're an apéro in Paris, so if you're along <laughs> the Seine, uh, you know, awesome. what music would you listen to? We did one that was kind of called Louisiane Cher. You know, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all yep. of the music that's francophone from Louisiana and a lot of wonderful artists like Leila Michaela and, and other artists who are French, you know, Creole speaking and Louisiana you know, and French speaking, and we put them all together in that. Uh, in that, pie, in that playlist. And then we also did one that's called multilingual state of mind. So it's not necessarily around French or Louisiana Creole in that context, but it's just all of these different languages that exist around the world. We wanted to kind of help expose people to that mindset that, there, that there's all this sort of innovation and in, in happening in these languages and that we need to maybe just kind of be interacting and thinking about these sounds as well. 
so awesome. Just like huge playlists that you can just listen to music over and over and over and over again. It's awesome. It's way, way cool. I thought that was a big plus. I was a big fan of that. Yeah, All right. music recommendations, uh, send them our way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you have something to add to the playlist. But one thing I did want to touch on too, very prominently when you get to your webpage, you have a uh, list of collaborators. I mean, they even got cool caricatures. So maybe who are some of these people? What are they bringing to the table for you guys? It's very important for us to have collaborators because we're a nonprofit, so we want to engage people as much as possible. And for us, it's essential that anyone who wants to get involved should be able to do so. So for instance, we have uh, quite a lot of contributors now. So um, if we want to give an example, for instance, we're working with Autumn Palin. She's a great uh, movie director in Los Angeles. So she reached out to us and she was interested in promoting French in the US. And she directed a short film uh, that's called Eating Lisa. And it's in French, and um, so she wanted to work with us, and we've been working together. She's drawn many beautiful illustrations for us that are on our social media pages as well as on our website. And uh, yeah, we're going to work with her on a lot of projects involving film, illustrations, and we're also working with academics, um, language advocates. So we have a lot of people we we are working with, and we're really open. We want to work with as many people as possible. Yeah, there's this kind of openness, um, and it, we've kind of been joking that it's kind of become, it's, it's a global team, and it's fun to watch that develop. I mean, we got, you know, Autumn out in, in Los Angeles, we have people distributed across Louisiana, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and we also have uh, some people in Paris. I mean, it's really fun um, to watch, because I think that that's kind of the idea that underlines the Francophonie, is that it is this kind of global, and these la the languages bring people together, and we have this very, very fortunate to have some talented people working with us on a lot of different types of areas. Some of it's kind of think pieces, some of it's film like Rudy was mentioning. And I think it helps pull together our project in the sense that we got to show the languages being used in a lot of different fields. So we're lucky to be contributing with people that you know, have their own specializations in these fields. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. I mean, Mike and I, if you want to give us a caricature, I think we'd be open to it. I'm just saying, but no, I think it's awesome. Cause you're, you're absolutely right. The, the, the entire, you know, the entire, you know, theme of this conversation, which I think is tremendous, is the whole collaboration piece. I think it's all because what I was hinting to earlier, I think the, you guys face a lot of the same challenges that we face up here in New England. And so to see you guys making those connections is is awesome. It's motivating for us up here in the Northeast. We think it's very, very cool. So uh, I do want to mention quick, you guys do have a newsletter, right? Yes. Yeah, we do. So we All put right. that together and we'll we send that out pretty regularly. So if anyone wants to sign up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's something we'll definitely have to talk about. This has been awesome. This has been an absolute blast. I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing because I think it's a really, really fun organization. I'm ex very excited about it. Um, maybe just one year from now, where are we hoping to be? Well, I think uh, cutting the big red ribbon. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, nice. We'd love to be getting close to opening that space in New Orleans. I think we would love to see several projects we, uh, you know, kind of coming to fruition and, and building that visibility. And I think hopefully what we'd like to just see is a kind of just, there's been a, a lot of momentum in Louisiana, but I hope that we also see that this momentum, and I think in places like the Northeast where there's also this momentum and people who are really working hard to develop out these languages, we would love to see these programs developed in which there's this collaboration so that this is kind of network around the United States yeah. about microphone um, actors is really coming together. And I think hopefully also for new at this stage, maybe in a year's time, really, helping play that role where we're not only we're, we're helping develop those networks within the United States, but some of the groundwork we've laid to have these institutional partnerships globally that they're Absolutely. really identifying. So thinking about Louisiana and the United States as also being part of the Francophonie and that we're, we're really yeah. in the nodes and we have our own perspective to bring to that table. That's awesome. I mean, having a seat at the table in that organization, I mean, just gonna open so many doors for you. And then hopefully, because it opens it for you, opens it for the rest of us here in the States as well. So I think that's really, really awesome. We're super appreciative that you guys took, you know, the two years to make that happen. So very, very cool. Thank you guys for that very much. Now, this has been awesome. If somebody wants to find information about your organization, where are we sending them? <laughs> so our website is www.nunola.org. And we are on social media, so our username is Nunola as well. So N O U S N O L A. <laughs> Very good. All right, we'll make sure Michael get all that posted. Thank you guys again. We've been talking, Scott Tilton, 
Rudy Bezanet, the founder of the New Foundation, a tremendous organization out of New Orleans. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you guys are able to put together down there. And like, I'm pretty sure Mike and I are going to have to take a field trip at some point to come visit. So this is awesome. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate the time. Thank you so Thank much. You. Now our fathers look at us and sigh with despair To think that everything they love we simply do not share But the spirit never dies, our culture will survive Each of us must choose how much to keep alive Each of us must choose how much to keep alive Special thanks to Josie Vashon for providing the music. You can find more about her at josievashon.com. This podcast was produced and edited by Mike Campbell. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at fclpodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at fclpodcast for more information about the topics discussed. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this episode.